Hey, this is Ant bringing you a Unreal Engine tutorial. So in this video, we'll be going into events and how they are used inside of the Unreal Engine framework. So if you're familiar with Unreal before, you might have seen things like Event Begin Play or Event Tick. Uh, but in this video, we'll, we'll look at the different types that you can use and we'll look at making a custom event to, to add to this framework. So without further ado, we'll go into the into the tutorial now. Okay, so what are events inside of Unreal Engine? Well, simply think, put, they're things that fire off at different intervals in the game. So for the sort of the engine life cycle, uh, including the editor, but the, the best easy example to show you is when you base, when you hit play. So inside of the character, you've got event begin play, but if you look inside of the controller, you'll see that I've got one setup called event begin play, and it basically sets the input mode so that it's game only. So if I hit play, that's exactly, as soon as that button's right and everything's been loaded, that's when that fires off. If I look in the controller, you'll also see that there's uh, input access for move forward and move right. And these are literally events that are triggered when the user presses a key on the keyboard. Same with the interaction jump as well. Space bar is pressed, the event gets fired inside. In this case, it's jumping the character. If you have a look inside of the top-down character, you'll see more of the, the ones that come with Unreal Engine Actors by default. So, Event Begin Play, I've just explained and showed you that. Event Destroyed, when the actor's been destroyed. End Play, well, the opposite end of Begin, at the end, as soon as the, the game is stopped. And Event Tick, where the event is called every frame if ticking is enabled for this particular actor. In this case, we're not taking anything, but if you hover over these individual ones, you'll see that there's actually tooltips that explain when these are called. So, how do we create our own events and drive our own logic? Well, I'll go into an example now. If I hit play, and let the AI catch us, you'll notice that you can restart the game, but there isn't any re the, the input stops working. So, we need a way of getting the input to work again. The bot resets, but the character doesn't. So we'll look at a solution now, how to get the character moving when the restart's hit. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to create an event inside of the character. So if you go into BP, new top-down character, go into the graph somewhere, right-click, type in custom event, add custom event, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one reset character. So from here, I want to get the player controller. And I want to set this, set input mode to game only. As you can see, we've created our own custom event called reset character. And this is called basically to set the input mode so that the player can use the keyboard to move around. So this needs to be called inside of the game mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get player character. I'm going to cast to the BP new top down character because that's where the event is. And from here, I'm going to called the event, which is reset character. Hit compile, save, hit play, let bot catch me, restart. And as you can see, I'm now able to move the character around once the bot catches up. However, there is a little bug here, which I've noticed, and the player is not teleporting back to the original start position. So we'll fix that now. So, all we need to do is inside of the top down character, we'll create it. Well, we've got a variable here which I've created before called start transform. But if you have not created this, all you need to do is hit add variable, select a transform, let's start, control drag that in. And what we want to do is we want to basically set that at the beginning of play. So we're going to have to bring in our event begin play. 
And then what we'll do is we'll grab the set node as get actor transform. Hit compile, hit save, and then as soon as the event get play begins, it'll record where the, the character is positioned and its rotation and scale. So when the, the reset character event, all we need to do is we need to just get that variable, get the actor transform, oh, set the actor for transform, beg your pardon. Set actor transform, plugin start. And as you can see, we're now using a single event to allow the player to A, control the, the character and B, reset the character back to where they started in the, within the game. So we'll just quickly demonstrate that. So if we run over here, hit restart, you can see that the, the player teleports back to their start position. It's facing exactly towards the pillar. And there you go. So to summarize, events are literally just used to drive gameplay logic. These can be driven from the actual Unreal Engine itself when something happens. So example, you hit play and then the game starts right up to when you hit escape and the game ends. So in the example that we created, um, we've created our own custom event to basically allow the controls to be used once uh, the player restarts the level. So if you want to have a look around, there's another couple of examples for open menu. And if you want to know where they're called, you can see it here. As soon as the character gets overlapped by an AI bot, it'll just open the menu from there. Inside of the controller, you've got an example of some input events that are that fire once a keys pressed. So in this case, the spacebar button is used to jump the character. And when the W8SD keys are used, it will add some form of movement to the character, depending on what the access value is. So in the next video, we'll look at functions and how we can use functions inside of the Unreal Engine framework to make our lives a little bit easier and also actually to generate some sort of value as well. So I'll see you in the next video.